Where we left off in the last episode was talking about um, the need for a transition to move from where you are right now to where you need to be emotionally and mentally. You know, there's a mindset and a mentality that you need to walk in. Um, you know, somebody had asked me the other day, they talked about, they said, um, CJ, the difference when it, when it comes to somebody who achieves great things and someone who also has ability but does not, what is, what's the difference? What's the main thing that makes those two people different? And I said, it's, it's mentality and it's mindset, mindset and attitude more than anything else. Uh, more than ability, more than stature, more than position, more than talent. It's mindset and attitude, heart. You know, what's going on inside you emotionally and mentally. And those things are very closely connected, very difficult to separate the two. Your feelings don't have a mind of their own. Your feelings will follow the focus of your mind. And that's an important key. If you want to change the way that you feel, simply change the thing that you focus on. Eventually, your, your feelings are going to follow the consistent thought that exists in your mind. But that's the primary difference. And so we want to get you from a defeated, acquiesced, settled position into war. Because right now you might, again, you might be saying, I don't want to be angry. I don't want to cause trouble. <laughs> I don't want any disruption. I don't need any more stress in my life or whatever we say to ourselves. But when it comes to living your best life, when it comes to knowing that you can achieve things, knowing that you can fulfill so much more, and there's something in your way that's resisting you, whatever it is, circumstances or people or yourself, whatever it is, you can't stay where you are. And if you do stay where you are, it's because you're not angry, <laughs> you're not pissed off, and you're not pissed off because you haven't meditated on the end result. We'll talk more about that. But this, you know, the series is called Warpath, Anger Against the Enemies of Your Progress. Well, Warpath, we all know, from the Native Americans, they would go on the warpath. What does that mean? Well, it, it's, it's when you transition from a state of peace to a state of war, Right? You know, a Native American tribe is not going to be at war all the time, but there were times when they came into contact with other tribes or, you know, some of the early settlers or troops or whatever. And so they had to go on the war path. That meant they had to leave some of the things that they were doing every day that they do in peacetime, you know, farming or whatever. They would have to transition to war path. Now, in light of this, they would make preparation for that. And so they would have a ceremony, they would have a ritual that they would go through in order to transition from the state of peace to the state of war. And part of that is the war dance. And if you're a fan of Anthrax, you remember the song Indians, in which they uh, Scotty and screams out war dance before the breakdown. Um, war dance, you know, they would dress themselves up, becoming almost ghoulish in order to um, provoke in them something much, much different. War or war dance is something that I think we all do to a degree. We all do it to a degree, but we don't um, we don't do it enough or we don't do it with enough intensity. You know, when Indians went on the warpath, everything else stopped and the tribe would center itself around the upcoming war. So that purpose then of the war dance was to serve as a transition, a transition phase as, as the men shifted from husbands and hunters into tribal warriors. And it would go as so far as they would paint their faces and their bodies. They did it to cover their identities. They did it to cover their identities with a ghoulish image that empowered the warrior's soul and terrified the enemy. So they wanted to change their identity, remove their face and cover it over with a ghoulish, frightening image it would both empower their own soul and terrify their enemy in battle. 
And this war dance was a passage for them into a different state of mind. That's why they would just do those dances around the fire. It's almost a meditative thing as they would transition, much like a boxer or MMA fighter or or other professional athlete will go by themselves or do something to get in that meditative state to transition from civilian to warrior on the court or on the field. The dance was a passage to a different state of mind. It was to lead to the euphoria as the repetitive singing and dancing dislodged their thoughts from daily living and prepared them to kill. That dance that would create this euphoria, the repetitive singing and dancing, it would dislodge their thoughts from daily living and prepare them to kill. They needed to be prepared. They needed that transition. You need that transition. And that means a change, man. That means a change. What's what's your war dance going to be? What is your war dance going to be? You know, for me, it's little things. For example, like these cuffs. Let's take these cuffs as an example. I wear these cuffs pretty much everywhere I go. And, you know, um, you might ask, why? (laughs) What's the point? Well, I mean, it's metal. For one thing, I've got their battle axes on them. And uh, these were custom made for me by a friend. And um, I wear them because it's, it's, it speaks of, of war. It, spe- it, just, it just says I'm, I'm wired for something different. So it helps me when I feel them, when I look at them, to dislodge my, any thought trying to get into my mind. Oh, I'm just like everybody else and I'm just going to settle and I'm not going to cause any. No, no this, when I see that, I think... No, I'm I'm forward moving. I'm just like these battle axes, a weapon of war to resist the enemy of my progress. Heavy metal for me is part of the war dance because it puts me in that mood, right? Reading, empowering books can be part of that war dance for you. Hanging around people that fire you up. Being in this group is a form of of war dance watching this series is a form of the war dance because it's a part of the transition process to get you out of that state of peace into that state of war it's war dance so it begins with that decision when you say no more when you say i'm declaring war against what's holding me back and i'm going to use all the tools at my disposal whether it be the cuffs on my wrists The music that I listen to, the books that I read, or the people I hang out with, or the words that come out of my mouth. I'm going to use what I can as my war dance to transition out of where I am and get to where I need to be. And we'll talk more about in the next episode about the feeding of the fury and making sure you get to that place where you're willing to move forward and take action and go to war. But until that time, think about what your war dance might be. Think about the things that empower you. Think about the things that fire you up. Think about the things that stir up your emotion, stir up your passion. Think about what those things are and surround yourself with them and escalate it. If you do it part of the time, do it even more. Whatever you do right now, whatever level, do it more. Because we really need to get you out. Your life is too short for you to take another day off. Can you dig it? Hope you can.